in the Old Testament, there are four separate and distinct gods being discussed. And there are is at least 25 pounds of, of information at UCLA alone, much less USC, Berkeley, and every other uh, university in this country. There were four separate gods distinct from each other being talked about in the Old Testament. But we don't know that because the priesthoods who put that Old Testament together, and you weren't there, so you don't know. But those people who put that Old Testament together knew that there were four different gods, four different deities. One was, one of the deities was the sun, of course, Solar. That's where we get Saul, Om, An. Uh, King Saul, Om, An was Saul, Om, and An. Saul, of course, being Latin for the sun. Om is uh, Hindu for the sun, the Om. And An was the city of the sun in, in Egypt. So one of, the, one of the gods in the Old Testament was the sun. One was the stellar cult, the old ancient Hebrew stellar cult who connected themselves with God through the stars. Then there was the moon cult or the lunar cult of which Moses was the leader of the lunar cult. So now you have a lunar cult, you have the stellar cult, you have the, uh, the solar cult. And incidentally, that's why Moses, being the lunar, uh, the leader of the lunar cult, uh, Hebrew Yahweh Jehovah was the lunar god, uh, the the god of the moon at that time in the time of Moses. He uh, he was El before that in the ancient Semitic, and that goes into the the planet Saturn. We'll get into that too. But but Moses, being a lunar a worshiper of the lunar god El or Jehovah naturally would not want to have would not want to have anything to do with the other group across the street or down the block you know the the, the other group down the block who worship a different god they worship in the stars so that's why he would tell his followers they have nothing to do with the star worshipers because we are moon worshipers over here and that's why of course after sundown is when the moon comes out that's why he would have all the holy days after sundown because that's when his god the moon came out so he'd have all the celebrations after sundown. So incidentally, one of the main reasons why the lunar or the moon was a, was a worshipped by the old ancient uh, followers of uh, Moses is because the moon uh, had control over the woman's menstrual cycle. And the, 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 they believed that the woman's menstrual cycle was set by the, the symbols of the moon. And, and since uh, they were into sex worship, that was one of the primary uh, factors in the old lunar cult was sex worship. I mean, that's why they had circumcision. Now, what is, uh, what is cutting the foreskin off of a boy's penis got to do with the holiness of the Lord? It don't have a thing to do with the holiness of the Lord. It's got to do with sex. That's why you're messing around with the boy's penis is because it has to do with sex. And the reason why they, they circumcise is because they found out a man would get uh, aroused quicker uh, without the foreskin than he will with the foreskin. So since that's what we are into here, a little sex and a little uh, menstrual cycle and all that, uh, therefore we, uh, we practice circumcision. But that was not new with the Hebrews. That, was, that it goes way back into the Stone Ages. I mean, the very earliest Egyptians also did the same thing, circumcised the young males, preparing them for a little sex worship. So uh, let's go on from there. Or... What's the, uh, We're do doing we have fine. Time? No, okay. yes, let's keep going. Okay, so um, anyway, there, there's, oh, so then we now are faced with the new scripture, a scripture in the, uh, in the Christian context is saying that Jesus, or God's son, says that uh, in my father's house are many mansions. Now, the problem with that is that's not exactly what the Bible says. The King James mistranslated a lot, and you have to understand why, because the old, uh, the old British Anglo-Saxon British were not that keen on Old Hebrew and, and Greek. So they did the best they could, but they mistranslated it a lot. And, of course, scholars today know that. But that scripture, in my father's house are many mansions, is mistranslated. It originally said, it originally said that in my father's abode are many houses. Oh, well, sure, there's at least 12 we know of, right? The houses of the zodiac. So in my father's abode, the heavens, are many houses. That's what God's son was saying. The King James was a wonderful man, I know, but his lackeys just didn't know Hebrew and Greek well enough to translate things correctly. 
and um, let's see. Now, later on, we see that the son is betrayed. Of course, he's betrayed in the fall by Judas or Scorpio, Scorpio being November, uh, or in the fall of the year, I should say, and that's when the uh, rays are cut short. I mean, Sal Oman or Samson's ray, uh, his hair is cut short cause, uh, because the... Uh, the uh, sun's rays are cut short in the winter, and so he dies. And so what we're talking about again is astrology. Okay, now, if you want to, uh, let's see, if you, we need to go back into the ancient world for the understanding of all the modern day concepts, again, as I said, for Christianity, and understand that the Bible is the greatest story ever told in that it is the only story ever told. Now, uh, let's see, the one we talk about, the light of truth, and we brought that out, and I'm going to bring that out again, because truth was always associated with light, and therefore anything that was uh, good was in the light, and if you did something bad, well, that was the works of darkness. And uh, interesting, too, is that the light was also, and is even so today, light is always associated with, um, with telling the truth about something. And if you, have, if you have good knowledge on a particular subject, then people say, well, you're brilliant. You're in the light. You're enlightened. Uh, and therefore, if you, as the ancients said, the ancient Egyptians said that if you, uh, in your mind, you put the truth out of your mind, when someone gives you the truth and is showing you the truth and you don't want to hear it, you put it out of your mind, what you're doing is you're killing the light of truth. And where are you killing the God's Son, the light of truth, the light in the truth? You're killing it in your head, in your brain. That's where you're put, shutting off the light of truth is in your mind. And therefore they said that God's Son was killed and put to death on Galgotha, Skull Place. That's where your brain is, is in your skull. Skull places where you put the truth and the light to death. So um, the light, of course, God's light, has always been impaled between two thieves. That's uh, regret for the past and fear of the future. We've always regret, you know, uh, put to death of light, put to death light and hope for tomorrow uh, between the two thieves, as I said. Uh, the sun, of course, has been used, and you know this, the sun has been used by kings and rulers and potentates and every kind of uh, rulers and, and institutions and everybody else, and their flags and emblems and symbols, police badges, I mean, everywhere. The sun is just used everywhere and as awards, you know, they give you sun, sun bursts and sundials and all that. So the sun has been used by everybody. That's why it's called King of Kings and Lord of Lords, because everybody uses it. The son also is said to have died with a crown of thorns. Well, of course the son dies with a crown of thorns. Now, all you're going to do is fly over New York and see the Statue of Liberty with a crown of thorns. Because the crown of thorns is nothing more than the sun rays. So when the sun's dying in the evening, you go out to the ocean, you see the sun walking on water. Yeah, he walked on water. And when you go out and see him walking on water, and what do you see? You see the, the sun rays. He dies with a crown of thorns. Uh, I brought also that... Um, they said, too, that God's son, the way he left is the way he's coming back, on a cloud. Well, of course, that's the way the son usually leaves, on a cloud. You, normally in the morning for some clouds, he comes up on a cloud. So that's the way he left was on a cloud, and that's the way he's going to come back on a cloud. And every eye will see him. Well, you've got to be dead or blind not to see the son. Every eye is going to see him. Of course, every eye is going to see God's son when he comes back. I mean, tomorrow morning. And, of course, uh, as I said, at 12 noon or 12, he's in God's temple and, uh, and taking care of God's business. Uh, then there's a story about God's son, as I said, walking on water. And then, of course, when during the storm, during that great storm in the Bible, it talked about the great tempest. And, 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 and the God's son was sleeping. And the storm was so bad, the Bible says the storm was so bad that the men on the ship were so frightened the, the, the seasoned sailors wanted to die. They just wanted to commit suicide because they just knew they were going to die. It was so rough. And, and the God's son is downstairs sleeping. And everybody else on the boat is going to die. They're, they're so frightened to death. It's such a bad storm. And he's sleeping. Now, I've heard of people who soundly sleep, but that is something else. A man sleep right on through a storm and don't even hear it. Okay? Until you understand that the sun does control weather. It controls the storms on the sea, and so the, the ancients knew that. They knew that the sun controls the seas. So um, 
I think I'm coming to an end on Christianity a little bit. Okay. I got about another four hours, but I'm going <laughs> to cut it down a little bit. Okay. Uh, we've uh, been talking uh, to uh, Jordan Maxwell, and uh, we decided to open this way to give a background to show the uh, astral theology or astrological aspects of the Bible taken from the ancient texts, uh, Egypt uh, in particular, and uh, how this has developed. And, of course, we're going to uh, go into how this developed into uh, uh, a political ideology and uh, lead into some of the uh, supremacist uh, uh, views and, and values and, uh, of course, the associations around uh, secret societies. Uh, but uh, before we do that, we'll, we'll go to a, uh, we'll take a little musical break. This is Marcus Lewis, host of Family Tree. We're, we're filling in for uh, Hamilton Cloud, who's away on assignment, and our guest is uh, Jordan Maxwell. And we're dealing with uh, ancient uh, belief systems, and uh, we're focusing in on uh, Christianity. And uh, we will uh, pick up where we left off. We we had. Well, you're going to finish yeah, okay, the just Christianity a few more segment. Little points I wanted to bring out. Yeah. Uh, one in particular is in relation to the other uh, symbols, like the, uh, the the two fishes, which is uh, Pisces, of course, and then uh, the the age that's coming up uh, after the year 2000, and that's why we're in the last days. We're in the last days, you know, last days of Pisces. That's all. It's just that it's just that simple. Coming of the end of the age. Coming the end of the, end of the age, and that's why we're going to have a new age. And it's oh, there it is, there it is. Of course, they that's changed that age to world. Oh, okay. In the, in the, in the mistranslation. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But uh, like all mistranslations, uh, this one uh, was purposely mistranslated. But uh, you see, I believe there's going to be a new age. But I, I don't think it's going to be the one that they've been planning for us. I think there's someone higher than the high one looking on. And there's going to be a new way of doing things. And it ain't going to include the kind of uh, manipulation, usury, exploitation, and the kind of stuff that's been coming down for the last 2,000 years, we can't afford another 2,000 years of this stuff. We've got to clean this up. So anyway, I wanted to bring out that uh, a couple of the other symbols of the 2,000-year uh, periods before Pisces, uh, of course, was uh, the age of Aries, the ram. And, of course, that's why the Hebrews blew the ram's horn at the beginning of the year. For the ram's horn was Aries, the ram. And, of course, out of that, Christianity deduces the ram or the lamb, the lamb of God. Well, in the old Hebrew, they put to death a, a lamb because it was called the paschal lamb or the symbol of the age under, uh, under uh, Aries, the paschal lamb, ram. And then, of course, uh, the bull, when they, when they were worshiping the golden calf, of course they worshiped the golden calf because the golden was the sun and the calf was Taurus the bull. So the golden calf was Taurus the bull or the sun in the astrological symbol of Taurus. And, of course, the concept of the judgment day, when everybody's going to be brought back up and going to be judged, you know, in the judgment day. That's Egyptian, and that's just a story. Uh, it's one more of the, of the stories, but it's just a story. There ain't no such a thing as a judgment day unless you understand what the Egyptians were saying. And the Egyptians were saying that the day that you are living right now is your judgment day. Because we are finding out what you are like. And you're being judged right now. And, of course, if you understand that, then you can go on and not have to worry yourself sick over what's going to happen to you when you die. Because for sure, you're not going up to heaven with God's son. I mean, you, I don't know where you're going, but you're not going up there with God's sun. Now, the idea that hell was hot comes from the idea or the concept that the sun, the, in, in, in Egypt, the sun is a lot hotter than it is in this country. In Egypt, it is hot what is hot. And so they realize that anything that's that hot, when it goes down at night, it must be hot as it's going through the earth. So if you die and you go into the earth, it must be hot. And, of course, volcanoes will blow up hot stuff, so that proved it right there. See, the, the earth is hot. So if you go into hell and you die, you go to hell, and it's hot. Actually, the word hell, H-E-L, is a Nordic Scandinavian word, and it was spelled H-E-L, not 